Good afternoon crafters. We are live here on the Carnation Crafts Facebook page. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I'm here to take you through the Just Passing By die collection. First off I have to make an apology. Um, it looks like there is someone trying to spam on the feed. Uh, I'm doing my best to try and uh, delete and block as we go. All that's left to say is please do not click on any of those links unless they are officially from Carn Carnation Crafts. I can only apologise for that on the feed. Uh, we obviously have protocols in place, we have lots and lots of things in place to try and stop this but unfortunately there are unscrupulous people out there who do try and uh, hijack live feeds so apologies, hopefully it won't uh, interrupt your viewing this afternoon. So this afternoon we are looking at the Just Passing By die collection which launched this morning on our website carnationcrafts.co.uk. Now first things first, apologies, the main collection and the very much sought after Strata card shape have sold out already. If you're looking for things like our new launches, it is always best to sign up for our newsletter www.carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash newsletter and you will be sent out uh, reminders, information, special offers, discount codes, all sorts of exciting things as soon as we have launches happening. So if you haven't done that, that's your first port of call, sign up for your newsletters. It will then uh, inform you of your new launches. I can see, sorry guys, I can see the spam still going. Hopefully there's someone perhaps from the office watching who is able to help with this um i'm not going to stop the feed i'm going to continue because i know there's lots and lots of people joining us already um but i just reiterate please don't click on any links they're not from us um if you are looking for a particular die set that has sold out or a collection like this one the just passing by collection or the strata card shape um what i would suggest is go into the product pages go onto our website click on the Just Passing By collection or the Strata card and scroll down a little bit and you'll see a box that says get an alert. All you need to do is sign up, uh, leave your email address within that little box and it will then uh, give you an alert. It will notify you when the stock becomes available again. I'm hoping we'll have it in a couple of weeks again. If, if someone's watching from the office, hopefully um, you'll be able to enlighten us as to when we can get some more um, die sets in. I've got lots of people joining us already, so thank you very much. I'm going to have a little scroll back. We've got Sheila. We've got Elaine here as well. Lee is here too. Carol. Uh, Pearl says, hi, Anna and everybody. I'm on time today. Oh, well, it's lovely to have your company, Pearl. Uh, June is here as well. Um, uh, Lee, thank you for reporting that spam. That's that's really, really kind. Thank you, guys. Um just having a little scroll back, making sure I'm not missing anyone. Suzanne's here. Uh, she says, hi, Hannah and all crafters. I'm the naughty step. I am on the naughty step, I should say. Brought the whole collection this morning. That's fantastic. Well, hopefully, uh, when we go through the demonstrations and things, you will be able to see um, lots and lots of different ways, lots of inspiration on how we use this gorgeous collection just passing by that launched on our website this morning. Um, and also, we're going to be doing two demonstrations because... We've had lots and lots of people. We, we uploaded a how-to video for the strata card shape on how to create the perspective, so the depth of design. Um, but lots and lots of people, their message has said, okay, well, how do I add to it? Um, I'll show you one way of adding to it, but we will talk you through other ways as well, which is lovely. Um, and it's just it's just one of those opportunities if you've got any questions as we go through. Uh, obviously, I'm battling all sorts behind the scenes today, as you can probably see from the feed. Um, but I will do my very best to answer questions as we go. We've also had lots of queries on how to make like an invite style card with uh, the Just Passing By collection. So we will look at that as well. So hopefully that will bring you lots of inspiration. It's also key to know that all the lovely designs by our incredibly talented design team are uploaded to our website um, carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash inspiration head to our inspiration pages for a gallery uh, and you can have a little look there and then from that point on it's just q a really if you've got any questions we will try and answer them so first things first we're gonna have a run through the collection and just see what um what we've got going on in this collection as i say the main collection just passing by has sold out but there are still individuals going so i still thought it was important to bring this into you there we go mr mark my lovely boss hello miss hannah we will be on the additional stock in the morning thank you mark so as i say 
guys sign up for the um product alerts for when the, the stock comes back in and it will alert you and just keep an eye on your emails as well don't forget to sign up for that newsletter www.carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash newsletter which is a fantastic jean says first time watching sadly missed the collection but we'll take your tips on board thank you jean do you know it is actually a really good point because these Facebook Lives, while we're demonstrating them with a particular collection or a particular set of dies, there's always little tips and tricks and little ways you can perhaps incorporate these makes into die sets that you may already have as well, which is fantastic. So up on the screen, we have got the full Just, it, Just Passing By collection. You may have caught the shows on Create and Craft when this launched about two weeks ago. And this whole collection is about those wonderful moments when we get things through the post. So it might be, um, you know, a card or a parcel or a gift or something like that. You've got elements in here to build your own street scenes. So things like the door, things like the pillar box, things like the street signs. We will go through each die in its own right as well. But there's lots and lots of detailing. <laughs> well, do you know what? That is something I would love to see. So... Carla is in the background battling the spam people, which in its own right sounds like some kind of really random comic book, but I personally want to see that. All sorts of images going on there. So thank you, Carla, for sorting that out for us. That is fantastic. That is so, so good. It means I can kind of retract my octopus arms and stop having to do many, many different things behind the scenes. Thank you, darling, for that one. So let's have a little delve on in to the particulars of this this collection. So first up, the Strata card shape. I know you guys have absolutely loved this card shape. Myself and Carla are massive, massive fans. What is amazing about this card shape is just how many ways it can be used from taking you from right from beginner, right from your standard side fold, tent fold cards to cards where you can then uh, snip away just elements of it using parts of the filigree. You've got lots and lots of mats and layers. Obviously, as you can see from the design here, it makes an absolutely gorgeous, elongated, like a DL style card. But those little die sets at the bottom, and as I say, I will go through those allow you to create this wonderful um, depth of perspective when you're creating card designs. So there, there's so many things to touch on within this card shape because it does so many things. Let's just show you an example of, isn't it fantastic? Just take a look at that. That's made by one of our design team, incorporating a lot of the elements from just passing by. But the Strata card shape has this base module that you can then add your panels to to create your sense of perspective, which is really, really lovely. June's just said, I just um, I brought this, orig this originally when it launched and wow, it's amazing. I'm certainly not disappointed and I can't wait to play. June, that's fantastic. It's so lovely, you know, because it's all very well me sitting here saying, it's a lovely collection, but hearing from you guys that have actually got it home and started working from it as well is brilliant. The strata card shape in its own right. I will just show you the die itself because I have got it here. And I think this demonstrates it really, really beautifully. You see these um, filigree edges here. You've got both the arch and the semicircle. Now I'm holding that to camera as well as I can. That filigree doesn't have an outside cutting edge, which means it gives you so much more versatility when you come to use them, meaning you can cut these filigree panels and also the semicircle into your cardstock as well. Really transformative and a great way of using it. We also have within the collection, here we are, pillar box. The pillar box, when I came to wear, was still available on our website. And again, it's one of those die sets you guys have asked for time and time and time again. It's this idea of um, sending our cards, isn't it? You know, a pillar box goes hand in hand with a card, doesn't it? If you're gifting that through the post. Think about adding a little bit of snow to this for a Christmas scene. Perhaps you've got other die sets like the flowers from Delivered in Style. It could be any number of them that will work so beautifully behind this pillar box. And also, don't forget, we have got our wonderful attempted delivery. <laughs> These little chappies are so cute. So we've got our little puppy dog and our little cat, and of course the little envelope embellishments there as well which begin this kind of story of interaction, perhaps your cat is going to be sitting on top of your pillar box and teasing your dog. I think if we, we, we're cat people or we're dog people, or even both, we are familiar with that sort of age-old rivalry that goes on. 
Here we have an example of the beautiful pillar box in all its glory and a few little leaves and florals around it from this collection as well. And of course, our uh, our post dog out front there guarding, guarding his mailbox, which I think is just a lovely, lovely image. Now, you might be wondering where those beautiful uh, greenery comes from. This is the beautiful boundaries. And again, it's just one of those collections where you're going to be expanding what you're making with this design. This could be a whole brick wall. Perhaps you're going to take elements of the brick and build them up to create a backdrop for your doors or your houses or your pillar boxes. You've then got that little uh, turret, if you like, of uh, the little uh, cornerstone with on top. And then all of these different layers of leaves. So these could be behind your fences. These could be behind your brick walls. Interesting to note, you've also got little um, bricks with flowers coming out of them. So it gives you more of a tumbled down look to your wall. And of course, a couple of flowers. And we will be using that within the demonstration as well. Steph just said hi from a wild and windy North Yorkshire. I should have probably said, yeah, it's absolutely bucketing it down here today. The wind is just immense. It's been going all day. Um, obviously, Morph the Cat has been just crazy because he hates hates it when it's windy I don't know what you you guys are like with your your animals he goes absolutely mental um so I must apologize if you can hear the rain in the background because my my studio is connected to to the conservatory and obviously on the conservatory roof there I hope it's not distracting from anyone yeah Sandra's just said hello from a blustery strewed in Kent so yes it sounds like the weather's a bit chaotic all over the UK I hope you're all keeping nice and safe Mingled in with our designs, we have got this one, which is Warm Welcome. Again, this beautiful idea of the steps up to your door. Um, you know when you were little and you draw your like picture-perfect house, you'd have your, your door in the middle, the windows either side, pointy roof, and then you'd always have, oh, I don't know whether you might be the same as me, but I would always have roses sort of growing around the door. And it's reminiscent of that nostalgia. It's reminiscent of that kind of idea. Again, you've got the little things here, like the, the doorbell there. Perhaps you want to cut that from Miri and add that too. And it's not forgetting anything we're showing you within these designs, uh, except from the strata card there, does come with its own coloured artwork. So when we're showing you things like this finished sample here, that artistry, that colourway is available as a free download from our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk, which is fantastic. Um, the little door itself, perhaps you've got, I don't know, what characters from other collections that could be carol singers, ideal for things like your Christmas cards from our home to your sentiments, which I think is lovely for a little Christmas design. Next up, we have got right up your street. I love these. I think this is absolutely absolutely ingenious so let me show you i'm trying to find a picture let me show you this one here so you can see just tucked in front of the door in fact that we've just looked at is one of these signs now these are what we call our editable vignettes which means you can take your uh, download your pdf download into our uh, uh, the adobe reader software which is what we recommend to open all of our vignettes with and you can type in your own sentiments before you print the vignettes out and I think that's just so game-changing because you're making your cards unique to your recipients. This particular um, design here uh, the DT member has included Love Lane so we were sort of we we on the launch on Crane Craft we included a lot of the presenters names within the the street name signs which I think is really really fun. Uh, Linda says love this collection looking forward to learning how to use it to make the most out of it Linda don't forget there's always catch up on Crane Craft as well um both myself and Carla demonstrated this set so it's nice to get sort of inspiration from both of the guests for Carnation take have their different takes on it. And of course, we will be demoing this today for you as well. So right up your street, as we mentioned, these little place names, these little street names, always, always, always open your vignettes. And I can't stress this enough in Adobe Reader because they are PDF. It just gives you much more functionality. Um, that rain's getting louder and louder. I'm very aware of that. Um, it gives you much more functionality. And when you're using these editable vignettes, it gives you um, a much easier route to use. Uh, when you're printing, print on your pro printing paper. If you're printing your mirrored vignettes, we recommend printing on your 120 GSM pro printing paper from us. And also um, do consider printing on a high quality print setting as well. So you get this lovely finish of colour and clarity. 
Um, Viv here says, uh, right up my street are my new favourite sentiment dies. They make it so easy to personalise cards. Yeah, do you know what, Viv? You're, you're quite right there. And actually, yes, we have styled them like a street name. But once you start using them away from this collection and in with other designs, they don't necessarily just have this sort of street name look to them. Think about if you do make your, hand make your cards, even if you just give them to friends and family, how professional is it going to look if on the back of your cards you have your, your name or your contact details or whatever it may be on one of these. So you've typed it in onto one of these and you just stick that on each one of your cards. You don't know where that may lead. Someone may pick it up off a mantelpiece, compliment the card, turn it over and see. And you could well be getting orders in that way as well. Um, let's have a look next up. Ah, okay. So things whereby you would want to add in more detailing, fine railings. So think about cutting this several times and having a whole promenade of railings across the front of your card. We saw samples on air of where these have been changed into gates sort of leading up to a really lovely driveway and house in the background. We've also got within the Just Passing By collection topping trellis. So think about winding in your greens from the beautiful boundaries as well. Perhaps there's other florals. I mean, I'm looking at that and thinking things like the arrangement maker or bouquet maker would be ideally sized to tuck in as little embellishments to these little trellises as well. It's all about adding detail with these designs. Let's just take a look at another one of the card samples. So here, this is what we we're saying. You've got those trellises in the top corner um, because we're using our mirrored vignettes. You can use them in opposite directions to one another. You've got the red sort of maple leaves from the beautiful boundaries, the pillars from the beautiful boundaries either side, the railings making up almost like a gate. Wonderful, wonderful design leading the eye to the central there, which is the door and of course the street name above. And you've got Sassy Cat waiting on the doorstep as if to say, look, come on, you know, you should have been home 10 minutes ago. I'm starving. I've not eaten for about five seconds therefore let me into the warm house and give me my food because I think that's what all cats say. So that gives you just an overview of the Just Passing By collection. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it does feel like I'm, I'm kind of teasing when the collection isn't available but don't forget we do always upload these vi videos to YouTube afterwards so you can watch back at your leisure and hopefully when this collection comes back into stock you'll find some ideas from this video as well. So let's just have a little, um, Angie, great idea there. She's just said regarding the uh, top of the trellis, so the, the little designs you've seen in the corner there could be spider's webs in black. Yeah, there's so many different ways of using these designs. It's all about thinking outside the box with these. Just having a little scroll back, make sure I've not missed any questions. I think we're good. Should we get diving in to a demonstration? Let's go for it. So we're going to be working with the Strata card. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a how-to video on our YouTube channel showing you how we use these components to transform a, a relatively flat card, if you like, into something with more perspective. We had lots and lots of queries on how you would then go about adding that into a design and adding panels to it. So that's what we're going to have a look at for our first demonstration before we finish on an invite kind of style card with strata card shape as well. So we're going to take, um, you may you may have watched the YouTube video, you may have not. We're going to take uh, the central panel down here, so this large rectangle and this little one that looks like a comb. We're going to cut the rectangle one a couple of times. We're going to cut the comb twice. Because lots and lots of people have asked us how to use this panel in conjunction with the strata card, which obviously would make sense because you get them in the same pack, we'd be demonstrating with the arches from the strata card. But it's really key to note this panelling and this idea can be used with your other die sets as well. There's no difference in what I'm about to show you to say using, I don't know, your square nested dies or the rectangular nested dies or whatever it may be that you want to work with. So we've taken the little comb mechanism and we've cut that twice. So that's going to sit either side like so on our card base and we've cut it from 350 GSM perfect smooth cardstock. That's really key. You want a nice heavyweight, nice construction weight cardstock on this. We've then taken the little rectangular die. I'm going to show you one first off. I don't want to confuse the matters by bringing in more. And these have little, little tags either side, little slots either side, whereby you start 
adding them to the comb. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots in the comb, allowing you for nine panels within the design. In theory, you could absolutely stick the combs together like so and extend it further should you wish to. Just bear in mind when you're working with something like the Strata card, for example, um, you don't want anything that's going to be too tall and therefore too top heavy and it's going to fall fold. OK, so there's a number of ways we can combat this. What I've done in this demonstration is cut this rectangle twice. It's just showing you different options from what we did in the how to video. And we have stuck that together. OK, so it's a, it's a thicker element here. So we've taken two lots of the 350 GSM Perfect Smooth, cut it twice using that rectangle die and stuck them together, which is forming what a 700 uh, GSM base. It's just to show you options. We've then taken, as you can see, panel, and then we've attached the strata card element. I will show you how to do this. I'm just looking for the elements that I haven't stuck down. There they are. Again, 350. Now we did mention this several times within the how-to video and I can't stress this enough. If you're working on something that is gonna be tall, like the strata card, you don't want any bend in it, okay? So you don't want this area falling forward. Once you've added your mats and layers, it's gonna give you stability, okay? So each one of these layers is in 350. If you're thinking, well, that's all very well, Han, but actually I don't want a white card background. I want a colored card background. Still work with the 350 as your base and then just um, cut and stick whatever color cards you want over the top. So things like uh, the free to download backing papers for just passing by on our website. You can then stick that in there. OK, I've done that twice. OK, and I will show you how I've done that. Taking the strata card base, you want the tags, the little clips staying upright and the slots staying down. So this is the orientation that we're going to be working with. I've then got the arches from the strata card. And again, as I say, we've cut them from 350 GSM, perfect smooth, and I've stuck them together first. So look how, I mean, look how rigid that is. It's no bend in it whatsoever. It's nice and straight and supported all the way along. Really, really nice construction weight of card. Along the bottom, we have stuck red liner tape because we're working in construction. You want a nice, strong adhesive tape. Red liner tape is going to be your best friend on this. You have got this amount of room, in theory, to anchor this element. OK, if you are using something that sits within your strata card areas, you could, in essence, place them here, as long as they don't extend over your mechanism, you just have to be mindful. You don't want anything interrupting how the combs work because you want to be able to fold this card flat. We're going to stick the strata card um, arches to the base using our red liner tape. I'm going to take that off in its entirety. Nice, nice sticky adhesive. I'm just going to do it around this way so I can line things up. You want to get this nice and level against the base. But obviously you cannot interrupt where the little C clips, the little um, tags sit. So you just want to bump that um, panel, if you like, down as far as it will go, leaving room of your C clips. OK, so that's that's your positioning. Make sure your sides are straight against the straightness of the panel on the rectangle there and then burnish that down. If you are working with things like heavyweight card and red liner tape, it is always a really good idea to go in and then just burnish to make sure you've got a nice strong adhesion between the panel and the tape and the arch. OK, so I'm just using a bone, bone folder here just to flatten that all down and make sure that's nice and straight. Again, if I just hold that up, you can see there's no bend. It's not tipping forward. This is why we said during the show and, and on the how-to videos, once you start adding your layers, it will give this panel integral support, okay? We're working with 350 GSM Perfect Smooth. Now, all we need to do is start slotting in exactly the same as you've seen us do already. I'm gonna leave the back um, little slice here open. We're gonna gently push forward one of the tabs and we're gonna go into that second slot. OK, I'm not going to push it down all the way 
because I want to add in my next panel again just gently easing that little tag forward leaving a slot free and then just like so placing that in you can already see how this is coming together our final one easing that forward obviously just for the purpose of demonstration I'm not decorating these I'm not adding loads and loads and loads of layers it's just to give you an idea of how you would build your strata card shape so again leaving a slot and then placing in we're just going to shuffle that comb down so the bottom of the comb meets the bottom of the rectangle bases okay hopefully that's making sense we're then just going to nice satisfying click on those as they go back into their little slots and we're going to take the whole thing and flip that over okay just aligning those bottoms all the way along and then taking our comb again we're going to ease each one of these little clips forward we're going to check where we started because remember we're working from the back forwards on this side and we're going to skip one so it matches it aligns with the other side and we're just going to slot that down so it meets the little area so it's just a little bit of wiggling to get that into place like so and then just ease that down so that comb aligns with the bottom here as well hopefully this is making sense please do let me know if anyone is lost at this point we're then gonna again nice satisfying little click as those little areas go back in now these little clicks here are just to keep the comb from coming up and out of the card shape itself again before we try and open this we're going to just make sure that's nice and rigid there make sure it's all aligned try not to knock it Hannah when you pick it up make sure the back's all aligned obviously you're working on nice thick cardstock nice heavy cardstock so when you open, you then get your opening for your strata card. A little bit of wiggling there just to make sure those clips are still in place. But essentially, if I just tip that over to one side, obviously I'm trying to demo this for top down. You'll get your nice straight areas, everything in its clips like so, and everything working. If you are finding any elements are falling forward, just wait until you've added obviously your, your detailings on. It's not going to notice once you've got everything sorted. And you can give the panels just a little curve like so, just against the backdrop so everything sits neatly. And don't forget, obviously, with something like this, you can then fold it flat for postage as well. Suzanne said, would you decorate it before putting it together? Yeah, absolutely, Suzanne. I'd, what I would personally do is get the majority of the decoration done. So if I want to put any colours on here, any coloured papers, you know, things like if I want to include the post box, for example, any larger size design, I would have sorted and ready to go. Then once it's open fully, like so... I'm going to take a look at it and see, right, where do I need to adjust things? Do I need to add a few more leaves in here? And then from that point, add those further embellishments should I wish to. OK, it's completely personal choice. That's just how I would work with it. Have an experiment. You know, at the end of the day, they're your dies and you can have a little play with these as many times as you like to see how it works for you. OK, that is just simply using the arches upright in a portrait element for this particular base. There's nothing stopping you using the arches lengthways, okay? There's nothing stopping you adding different frames to this. There's nothing stopping you adding different nested dies. The principle is the same. You've got a nice about an inch depth there to anchor, whatever it may be to your base, and then decorate as you wish, okay? Hopefully that has gone over how we then add to the um, strata card shape um, on the bases as well and that clears up any questions if you do have any further questions as we go through just type them up and i will look to address them throughout the facebook live okay now should we get working with some of our beautiful vignettes our colored artwork from this collection I'm gonna have a whole host out in front of me because i just think there's something so 
Ah, oh, motivational. There's something so wonderful about having a choice of vignettes. I'm just going to grab my panels and things that I've already got cut out of these beautiful papers. These are all cut from the uh, perfect papers that accompany it, accompany the Just Passing By collection. We've got a few of these gorgeous, I'm going to say maple leaves because it's these lovely red, rich kind of colour design. A few of the blossoms here as well post dog had to feature because he's just so handsome isn't he isn't he beautiful um a few more little blossoms oh and i nearly forgot of course post dog needs a little envelope as well so this is what we're going to be working with onto our strata card shape now let me just move a couple of these out of the way just so i can show you different options within the strata card shape this time around we're going to be focusing just on the top panels here rather than working with the bases you've seen how the bases work a couple of times now so hopefully hopefully that helps we're going to be constructing a card with the elongated die designs here um elaine says would you cut the extra teeth off personally elaine no i wouldn't what i would do sorry i'll just flip back to this um this demonstration here if i was to say have and i want to want only sorry let me try that again if I was only having three panels, what I would do is have the this end of the comb finishing at the front here. I would then leave this excess hanging out the back, if you like, which, which doesn't sound particularly great, but there is a reason for that. If you've got more structure along the base protruding from the back, if you like, it will then act as an anchor to stop your card tipping forward, which is great. Mandy says, can you put the mechanism on top as well to make it all stable? Would that not work? Yes, absolutely, Mandy, you can. Do just bear in mind you're going to have, you're going to see the mechanism, okay, which is why the cards we've designed have all been designed using just the mechanism at the base. But there's nothing stopping you putting it at the top if you wanted to as well. It would still fold and it would still um, fold flat for postage like so. This time around, we're going to be working with the Stratocard panels. And essentially what you could do is cut two of the outermost panel, so the largest die within the pack, score it along the top, attach the top to the bottom, and that's going to give you a lovely uh, long line tent fold card, okay, onto which you can start adding, I don't know, your panels, for example, you can have your semicircles on there you can have your designs on there and that's going to create a really lovely backdrop uh, into which you can start adding your detailing. However, one of the uh, things we've been asked a lot is how would we change this into um, almost like a gatefold, okay, an invitation kind of card. We are still going to cut two of that back panel, but these are basically going to sandwich together, okay? So one, two. Again, anytime you are working with your um, construction weight, so your back panels, your, your card bases, anything whereby it needs structure, straight to 350 GSM Perfect Smooth. It is the ideal card stock for this. Oh, Carla, I do love you too, you gorgeous lady. Just look over after those pandies and come back nice and fit and well to us very soon. So this time around, I've got to get this right in my head because <laughs> I don't want to confuse matters. We're going to be making this into a gatefold. So what we've done is we've cut hinges, okay? So we've taken a look at the size of the semicircle. We've cut the semicircle from, again, you probably guessed it by now. I don't know how many times I've said it in the video, <laughs> but I've been boring myself with how many times I've said it. 350 perfect smooth cardstock. And we've cut down a length of card about an inch and a half wide um, on one side, uh, a little um, score line in the middle, inch and a half ish on the other side, and then just shorter than the die itself. That's been sandwiched between two of the semicircles, or the largest, and it creates this hinge. Okay, this, this little mechanism here has just been cut using a paper trimmer. That is going to stick on our base like so. You don't want to squidge it right up so it's really, really tight and then hard to um, unfurl and unfold and things like that. But what you do want to do is make sure you are sticking the hinge element here on the reverse of one panel. Okay, we're going to then use the second panel to sandwich. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to make sure that's nice and aligned. Like so. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. I'm going to turn it over and keep my hand on it. So I know I've got that semicircle, nice and precision. Just looking for my pokey tool. There it is. Again, just making sure we haven't got it right but up against that seam, that, that um, score line, should I say. You want a little bit of give in that score line. So you've got room for that hinge to come over and it's not going to bend or interrupt the side of the card. Again, working with our red liner tape, we are constructing it. So you need a nice, strong adhesive tape. Taking our poke tool and removing the carrier sheet for, oops, the red line tape and then folding that over okay just like so again anything whereby we are sticking we're going to burnish with our bone folder same thing again but i wanted to show you how we sandwich both elements as well oh goodness me red liner tape everywhere this side we are working with the arch okay so look how they kind of sit together you're not going to get an exact join because obviously they're not designed to exact join you're going to have this like peep through effect which i think is really really sweet but you're sticking your little hinge in the middle you've got red liner tape on both sides one strata card is going to sit underneath just aligned i'm using that base card to align everything and keep that all sort of butted up against I'm going to shuffle that up so I can use the edge of my mat there as well. And you're just basically making a little sandwich. So I'm just going to stick that strata card evenly to the hinge. I'll make sure I've got the other one ready as well. Just removing the red liner tape like so. Try not to wobble my cardstock when I'm working with it. And then smoothing that hinge down into place and then burnishing, okay? We then have to sandwich that. So anywhere whereby we're adding a hinge, you want to basically disguise it inside a sandwich of your die cuts, like so, okay? So now you're, you're, you've hidden that little hinge mechanism. Um, I'm going to, how am I going to stick this? Let's stick it like so, just making a little tab, making sure we can come in and line up. Just about taking your time and aligning all these so you don't see the workings of the card. And this is how, how we make things look really, really professional. Obviously, if you're not sort of trying to demo to camera and all that sort of thing, do take your time over aligning these elements that back grab the red line tape basically you just want an anchor at this point you just want somewhere where it's stuck in its entirety burnishing that down before we can go in and peel away the other elements sorry i'm just getting muddled up there with my other bits and bobs so now we, now we've got the hinge stuck in place we can go in and remove the carrier sheet on the other elements to stick the rest of the card. So Pokey Toy is going to be your friend in this, this instance. You can go in and just easily remove the carrier sheet on the red liner tape. Same on this little lens. Anywhere whereby um, you want those sides of card touching, we're just going in, removing that all, smoothing that along, smoothing that down. And again, because we're working with this sort of red liner tape design, just burnishing like so. Excuse me while I de-red liner tape myself. Nice staticky red liner tape. And there again, exactly the same as the semicircle. I just wanted to show you the construction at that point. You then hinge over. Remember, you want to hide your mechanism. So you're taking this panel of the hinge behind the base panel of your card, lining that up, folding that over, making sure you've got even top and bottom. Obviously do a better job than me of making these all nice and even. And once you've got everything in place, we're gonna just fold back the hinge 
remove the red liner tape again every element of this is being stuck with red liner tape and cut using our 350 just being careful not to move this hand because this is holding everything in place tuck that over and then smooth that down now that looks really unsightly on the back you don't want to see these mechanisms you don't want to see these hinges so this is where our second uh, largest size die largest size panel comes into play again red liner tape along that's going to sit neatly along the back and you see how you're hiding all of that workmanship it's just such a lovely way of creating a card in this kind of design once again just folding the carrier sheet of the red liner tape over one side to allow us time to go in line up all the elements hold in place So make sure it's nice and neat and then remove and burnish because we're doing lots and lots of layers of 350 you can because it's going to give you structure i would i would suggest you could try a lighter weight of card but just bear in mind if you're if you're sending it through the post you want something that's going to stand up to um, and have the integrity to be able to hold its own once you've stu uh, stuck one element of the red line tape, go and remove the rest of the carrier sheets, just easing the carrier sheet away with your pokey tool and removing before sticking. And then of course, just burnishing everything nice and flat, just to give it that nice professional finish with your bone folder. Okay, so that could be uh, an invitation gatefold either side either way i think i like it with the um arch on this side and then the semicircle on this side but it's really up to you that's a really nice heavyweight card obviously do try it have a little experiment around with card shapes when you're sticking everything do try and get it all straight that one's gone a little bit um <laughs> awry just because i can't re lean over and look but that gives you a nice idea on how we can line everything up for your kind of like um a invitation kind of card a gatefold card now to decorate. So what we've done here, we're taking panels and designs from the um, Just Passing By collection, Just Passing By papers. This particular side, I'm using the 350 as a base. I then cut it from the, um, again, the largest size arch from the perfect papers. And this is gonna be stuck on using our foam tape, just aligning that along like so holding that in place as we peel away again remember don't try and stick all the elements in one go it just gives you detailing it just gives you um a wonderful amount of um, ability to to then hands-free go in and adjust take away the carrier sheet on your other elements and stick like so so starting with the darkest color we're then moving to the next lighter colour from the Just Passing By Perfect Papers. And we're moving down in size for the card design. So just lining that up like so, holding that in place. Remember just sticking one panel at a time. I'm trying to do this in a in a in a way that doesn't take too long because I'm aware that I've kept you for two demonstrations within this um show and i want to try and give you as much information as possible without taking up your whole afternoon and final panel goes on it is the filigree panel um, but in the backdrop of this we've included the free to download backing papers just that nice sort of mottled effect really really pretty but you see how the colors within the backing paper match in beautifully with the perfect papers and by adding this element it's just taking away that boldness of colour. It just softens everything a little bit, like so. And of course, then the filigree is cut from our perfect blush. So our white card stock, which is coloured, a hint of colour. Because I'm working with this nice pink background, the perfect blush I've chosen to use is the perfect blush in the rose, as the name would suggest. It then works with nice warm tones. It's a nice pinky finish. That filigree is then stuck flat. Same thing again on the other side, but this time rather than building layers with the foam, these have all been stuck using our finger lift tape. 
just taking the elements and folding them over the edge to create my tabs. Same colour process from the dark to the light and layering that on the base and sticking it like so. You see, see how this is coming together? You've got this wonderful idea. Obviously, if I was making this at home, I'd cut a panel to go on the inside, probably from the nice um, dark colour here, and then I'd have a matte layer on top of something neutral that I can add to, can write on to type something on, to use a peel off on, for example. It's really up to you. It's also worth noting if you wanted to at this state, or before you've stuck your um, coloured layers on, you could include something like a ribbon. All you would need to do is stick it between your white card base that you've constructed the card base from and your coloured, so just in there, with a little bit of red liner tape and same again on the other side between your colored and your um 350 and again it hides the mechanism it hides any um show and tell on how you've constructed this and you can have a little bow tied on front which i think would be really lovely as well so that gives you an idea of how we have constructed our base our little gatefold design but let's have a little bit of fun with a few of the die cuts from this collection as well so here's the pillar box i say before i came to there i did check it was still available as an individual on the carnation crafts website and we're just going to Oh, look at me, naughty me, I've got my ball tool in my glue there. Luckily it all just peels away. Reason why that's naughty is you want to keep your ball tools nice and smooth. Um, anywhere where you've got glue, that one's got glue on it, it just needs a bit of a clean. It can transfer or stick when you're trying to shape, okay? Same with these, just keep them nice and clean and we're just shaping. So we're giving this a little bit of a curve as a pillar box would be in real life. Just going up, we're using our largest ball tool and then kind of adding in a little bit more of a dramatic curve using the smaller ball tool there. That gives it a nice gentle curve, making it look like a real life pillar box. You get a lovely sweeping curve to them. Before I stick, I'm just gonna check placement. So post dog is gonna sit in front, but of course post dog needs to be all curved out as well. So I'm just gonna go generally over him to give him a little bit of lift. And then we're gonna go in in sections with the ball tool as well. Just like so, and rounding him all off. When, whenever you take your um, sculpted piece of uh, vignette away from your foam mat, you'll find it's, it's curved in one direction. Just take some time just to ease him, sort of bring his head forward, and then you get that sort of undulation where his little chest is puffed out, and then his neck goes in, and then his head comes forward. He's going to sit in front of our post box like so. We're going to have some leaves around the post box, but I'm going to add those at a different point and also some flowers as well. We're not going to go too over the top, but we are going to play on this theme of this nice rich burgundy finish. So we're just checking placement. We can see we just want to stick the edge of our post box down. So I'm going to keep my fingers in place and just kind of eyeball where I need to put my pen flare glue. Along the base is fine. And just up to that corner there. So a little bit of lift, a little bit of height using that three-dimensional glue. And we're going to align our pillar box at the bottom of our card there as well. I'm going to hold in place because I think we could do is sticking that top as well. It could be that you want to create almost like a, like a little memory book or like a mini version of a memory book with the strata card shape. You could absolutely do that using this kind of gatefold technique. Perhaps you want to include magnets. If that was the case, you could place your magnets behind, sort of in between those layers where the hinges are sandwiched, put that in there, and then it all comes together beautifully. Um, Wendy says, hi, when using your pro paper, sorry, when using your pro paper, what's best setting for printer? Is it glossy? Thanks. Um, have a little play around, Wendy, with your printer settings, because it is, it is worth noting all printers are different. For my personal use, what I recommend is a matte photo paper setting on a high quality print setting as well you don't want glossy because that that would kind of instruct the printer that you're working on like a, a glossy photo paper whereas the pro printing paper is in a matte finish so as close to a matte finish as you can get it depends on what options you have on your printer settings post dog's going to fit just inside of the pillar box there so again three-dimensional glue gel if you prefer 
working with foam pads, absolutely go for it. I just find that you get a little bit more wiggle room and a little bit more um, time when it comes to designing with the pin flare. And once again, we're just aligning that, just tweaking that into place so that post dog doesn't look like he's floating in front of the post box. So his little feet are coming further over the edge of the pillar box there. I'm just gonna use my foam folder just to hold that down so it doesn't keep interrupting what we're doing. And then the leaves and things, I don't want too many. I just wanna kind of have them tumbling around the top of the post box. And this is where Carnation come into their own. Of course, we supply you with the die cuts um, to give you this, this idea of a fullness, but you can absolutely go in and follow the cut line details with your scissors just to trim away sections, just little areas and really make them your own. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my everyday glue. I'm working with my Friday glue because I haven't unpacked and repacked from the demo we did on Friday. I'm sure you guys will forgive me though, given that it's not Friday, it's Sunday. A little bit of the everyday glue out onto my mat, and then I'm gonna grab one of my glue applicators as well. Just because I wanna be a little bit precise, because I'm working over the edge, I don't want any glue spilling over, and then perhaps interfering with the, the aspect of the gatefold or getting stuck in the wrong place. I want the ability to choose where I'm placing. So again, just lining up, having a look where I'd like that little bit of leaf to sit. I've just noticed there's a little bit of a die cut left in there. So I'm just gonna poke him out. And we're gonna line up just that area along here. So I'm coming in and gluing the front of the vignette with my everyday glue, and then sticking that to the reverse of the post box, just like so. Don't worry about it looking like it's floating in mid-air. We are gonna resolve that by adding layers along the front as well. So it's just really about even, even grounding, if you like, the, the top. It doesn't really make sense when I say grounding the top, but grounding elements of the, the post box. So everything kind of tells a story and everything makes sense. Wherever we've snipped away, just take the time to go in and round. So whenever I'm trying to round something off, it with a white background. I'm taking my scissors and I'm moving the die cut rather than trying to move my scissors just to give that a really lovely soft rounded finish on those elements where I have cut away leaves and things. And this one I'm going to hold with my tweezers and just look to a line. So that's going to sit over the front of my post box like so. So again, just checking where we need our glue. This time the glue will go on the back and just along little detailed areas like so. And then just tapping that into place gently until the glue holds. And I would like some of that little um, sort of leafage coming down the other side but I've just got to pick pick my areas almost want this kind of tumbling effect I think I'm going to snip away that area again and it might be you don't want sort of a red on red finish or a burgundy on burgundy finish you could absolutely um, do the same look with the greens from your um, beautiful boundaries you know there's lots and lots of options within this collection to change things up I'm I'm quite into a, a colour sort of look at the moment whereby I like things that are all kind of matching um, but it really is fun to mix things up and have a go on however you want it to look. So again just coming in here adding in more backdrop for our little leaves there. I think that's going to be enough for the leaves I think that looks quite fun. I wanted to include a few little florals now I know these are oversized compared to the post box there but I think it adds in a nice soft element from the deep red but once again let's just ball these petals so they come up they lift up and then let's just add in a little bit of shaping to those leaves and then decide where we want them placed I think we might snip into them and just add them around the the pillar box there as well again remember once you cut these out as long as you are cutting the vignette artwork out with our die cuts our dies themselves you're welcome to use them in whatever designs you would like 
happy of card making. And let's go in with a little bit of pin flare. Oops, could have done without squidging that all over the front of my cup there. Again, softening all that red with a little pop of green really brings that colouring to life. Really, really pretty little blossom there. And the other blossom would look really sweet just off to one side. So let's just snip away that bud. Like so. And this is what's great. I mean, you find so many different combinations. Once you start snipping into things, once you start layering things, it really is choices are endless when it comes to this because it's it, they all dies at the end of the day to have a little bit of fun with and just changing the orientation of the flower so they don't look like they're facing the same way let's take the leaves from this one and have these coming down the post box I'm just looking for my scissors honestly i'm in one of those moods today where i could literally put something down on my craft desk it'd be right in front of me and i still managed to lose it does anyone else have days like that is it just me Goodness me, sometimes I do worry about myself. This little one curving down. Because we've got the mirrored vignettes, we can flip them over. And actually, I think that hugs the post box nicely. So when we say mirrored vignettes, what we're talking about is having the artwork on the reverse of the die cut as we do on the front, giving us options. It just allows you a little bit more control over your composition. Because here... The leaves now are cascading down and hugging the post box from this side, whereas on this side, they're coming down this way. Just gives you that little bit of craftability. I want, I want, listen to me, honestly. I would like some more green at the top of the card there. So again, just adding in this little die cut. And it's just about balance. I find if you're putting, putting things down onto a card, you want to work in 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 three so here we've got one aspect of green two aspects of green three aspects of green so it just comes together beautifully um da, da, da. do we want a little bud just for point of difference yeah why not we've got it there we might as well use it i think it's really pretty as well and then just lifting and tucking. So you see how you're transforming the look of the blossoms there into something how you want them to sit on your card front. I am going to finish with my post dog's little letter because he does look like he is guarding it. He's ready for the postman. He's just going to sit under his paw. He is there ready and waiting to deliver his post. Bless him. I'm using my tweezers because it's a little bit fiddly when we're, we're working with smaller die cuts like this and glue. So just slipping that under post dog's paw to tell that story or that letter he is guarding so beautifully ready to put in the post. There we go, one finished card. Hopefully you found some techniques you might like to try at home. We've got obviously that gatefold design. Of course, you could continue the story on the inside of the card, but essentially it's to give you an idea of how that all comes together. So once again, we've gone over how we construct that card base on the strata card, how we add in the panels like so to decorate as you wish, and also a demonstration how we use the strata card to create a gatefold effect. I will take a photo of this and pop it up on the crafters group as well. And of course, you're more than welcome to copy this exactly or just take elements from this for your own creations as well. We look forward to seeing what you will make with this. Let me just turn the camera around. There we go. One finished card using the just or elements, I should say, from the Just Passing By collection. That one's taken a, a bit of a dive. I will sort that out before I um, take the photos. <laughs> Pillar box is trying to escape as well. There we go. Okay, so I will upload that just afterwards. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Hopefully you found elements of that useful. Look forward to seeing your creations in our group, Carnation Crafts. Don't forget to uh, sign up for our newsletter, carnationcrafts.co.uk forward slash newsletter to be among the first to hear about all our new releases. And of course, if you are looking in particular for that Strata card or the Just Passing By collection in its entirety, head on to the product pages and sign up to get an alert as to when those products 
products become available again. Thank you all for joining me this afternoon. We will be back um, with another Facebook Live. I believe it's on Thursday. Um, might be sharing some little sneaky peeks of what we've got uh, over the coming days with that as well. Oh, thank you guys. Sheila says, lovely card. Hannah, uh, Suzanne says, thank you, Hannah, beautiful cards. You guys are always more than welcome. Sue says, brilliant, Hannah. Answered so many little queries I had about this shape. So you're more than welcome. Thank you as always. And if there's anything you guys want to see, do hop on to our group, Carnation Crafters. Find the pinned post, which is the Facebook Live requests. If you can't find it, just pop pop a request up in group and we'll add them to the lists as far as possible. Uh, in the meantime, guys, stay safe, take care, and I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye.